This video addresses adding and subtracting mixed numbers, which is part of the fifth grade standard of adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Before we get started on how to, let's talk about what mixed numbers are. Mixed numbers are just what they sound like. They are a mixture of whole numbers and parts of wholes, in this case fractions. Just like in decimals, we have our whole numbers and our decimals are parts of wholes. In fractions, we have whole numbers and fractions. Visually speaking, if I have four and two thirds, that means I have one, two, three, four whole pizzas, and then I have a fifth one, but I don't want the whole thing. I only want two thirds of it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and scratch out this third. And so I have my one, two, three, four pizzas and my two thirds of a pizza. So that's what a mixed number is. Okay, so how do we add and subtract with mixed numbers? Actually, the beginning steps are exactly the same as adding and subtracting with fractions. You need to make common denominators. And so to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and line them up vertically because I think it's easier to show that. So we have two thirds and one fifth, and we're gonna write out our multiples. If that sounds unfamiliar to you, you need to go back and watch my adding and subtracting with unlike denominators video <clears throat> on my channel. So, we'll write out one, two, three. Remember, we're not writing out a ton of them because we don't want to waste effort. So, two, four, six, eight, three, six, nine, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Hmm, nothing yet. Let's do a couple more. Fifteen, eighteen, ten, twelve, five, six. 25, 30. Aha, here we go. 10 fifteenths and 3 fifteenths. So I have 4 and 10 fifteenths minus 3 and 3 fifteenths. Okay. 10 fifteenths minus 3 fifteenths is 7 fifteenths. And 4 minus 3 is 1. So my answer is 1 and 7 fifteenths. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with the addition problem. First, line up vertically to make it easier. Then we're gonna make our multiples. One, two, three, one, two, three. So we have one, two, three, four, four, eight, 12, 16. Two, four, six, eight, six, 12, 18, 24. So looking again, we have three twelfths here, four twelfths here, those are our common denominators. So 3 twelfths and 4 twelfths. Well, again, start with the fractions. 3 plus 4 is 7, so that gives me 7 twelfths. 3 plus 5 is 8, so my answer is 8 and 7 twelfths. Okay, but what happens if the top mixed numbers numerator is smaller than the bottom numbers? Here's an example. We have 4 and 3 fifteenths minus 3 and 10 fifteenths. Well, let's line them up. I've already made common denominators, but look at that. We have 3 minus 10. Well, you can't do that. You can't subtract 3 minus 10. So what the first method is, making these mixed numbers into improper fractions, meaning that the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So what you do is you multiply the denominator by the whole number, and then you add it to the numerator. So 4 times 15 is 60 plus three is 63, so we have 63 over 15. And you can use the space to the over here, and I call that side math. So if you weren't sure what four times 15 was, you could write 15 times four, and you could do the math. Five times four is 20, carry the two, as so we get 60. All right, next, 15 times three plus 10. Three times 15 is 45, plus 10 is 55, so 55 fifteenths. Notice the denominators stay the same. Okay, 63 minus 55 is eight, so our answer is eight fifteenths. That's the first method. Second method is borrowing. In borrowing with whole numbers, you take one away from the bigger place value and add 10 to the smaller one. With mixed numbers, it's a little different. First and foremost, Line up the fractions like you normally would to make it easier to subtract. 
Now, we have 3 15 minus 10 15 We can't do that, but we know it's going to work because 4 is bigger than 3. So, we take 1 away from the 4, that becomes a 3. And then here's where the change happens. Normally, you'd add 10 to the smaller part, but here, you add the denominator to the numerator. So, in this case, it's 15. 15 plus 3 is 18. Now, over here, if I had 6 and 2 thirds, the 6 would become a 5, and you would add a 3 to the top, so that would become a 5 as well. Or 4 and 1 fourth. The 4 becomes a 3, and you add 4 to the top, giving you 5. As you can see, you take 1 away from the whole, and then you add the denominator to the numerator. So we have 18 minus 10 is 8, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So you get the same answer either way. We're going to do one more example, and I'm going to use the borrowing method uh, to, to show this last one, just so that you can follow along with me. So again, line up the fractions. And here again, I've already made common denominators. If they weren't the same, you'd have to make common denominators. All right, so I can't do 3 minus 8, so I'm going to borrow from the 6. 6 becomes a 5. And then we add the denominator to the numerator. 12 plus 3 is 15. So 15 minus 8 is 7. So we have 7 twelfths. 5 minus 1 is 4. So the answer is 4 and 7 twelfths.